through the numerical examples, we saw that limit p n, p is a transition matrix. So, the nth power as n goes to infinity, if this exists, if the limit exists, then it converges to a matrix with all rows identical. Whatever two, three examples we uh, considered, we saw that the limit existed and then uh, we saw that the rows were becoming identical as we increase the power value of n. That means, we continue taking higher and higher powers of uh, p. So, we can easily show that in case limit p n exists, uh, uh, limit p n as n goes to infinity, if this limit exists, this will always be the case. That means, whenever this limit exists, then uh, this will converge to a matrix whose rows are all identical. Right. So, um, uh, let us uh, show this immediately uh, very easily. So, limit p n suppose n goes to infinity is, so q 1 is a row q 2 q a q k. Suppose, these are k rows, we are considering the system when it has k states, uh, k possible states. So, then I can write limit p n as n goes to infinity as limit p n minus 1 into p as n goes to infinity. Then, uh, as s goes to infinity, this and this have the same uh, value. So, this uh, same matrix, they will converge to the same matrix. So, this will be q 1 q 2 q k is equal to q 1 q 2 q k p. Right. So, this reduces to in the limiting case, this reduces to this system. Right. And then from here, you can say that q i, the i th row here would be the i th row multiplied by p, post multiplied by p. So, this is it for all i. And hence, you can see that uh, uh, all rows of p are, uh, I should not say of uh, p, what I want to say is that uh, if it converges to p is your transition matrix. So, all rows of p raised to n will converge to. So, all rows of uh, limit p n, I should write here limit p n as n goes to infinity are identical. <coughs> okay. Now, um, if you want to solve for this, we can see that immediately, see you know that uh, the rows of p the rows of p um, have the property, because it is a transition matrix. So, all rows add up to 1 and therefore, um, uh, this is not a non singular matrix. And so, here uh, you will have infinite solutions in the, to this system, you will have infinite solutions, but then if you uh, also require the elements of q i to be non negative and they add up to 1. That means, we are looking for a solution where the q i is the elements of q i form probabilities then uh, uh, this will be a unique solution and I will denote this solution by uh, q i is equal to pi 1 pi 2 pi k and these will be known as the uh, steady state probabilities. So, that means, uh, when the system has uh, in a steady state, that means, it has gone on for a long time, it settles in a, to a steady state, then the probability of being in state 1 is pi 1, probability of being in state 2 is pi 2 and up to pi k. So, this is the whole idea and now we will uh, come up with a, a method of obtaining these uh, uh, values pi 1, pi 2, pi k, the steady state probabilities. So, now let us uh, evolve a method for computing the pi i's, the steady state probabilities. See, uh, p n can be written as p n minus 1 into p, the nth power of the transition matrix. So, then if I take limit on both sides, then this is limit p n and n goes to infinity and this is limit p n minus 1 and goes to infinity into p. Now, as we said, so since we have assumed that the pi i's exist and so uh, each row of p n in the limiting value would be pi 1 pi 2 pi k. So, all the rows are identical. Therefore, on this side also you get uh, the matrix pi 1 pi 2 pi k, pi 1 pi 2 pi k and so on. Similarly, uh, p n minus 1 will also converge to the same matrix and this times p. Right. So, the limiting behavior, I can just uh, break up this in this way and then do it. And so, if this is going to the limit in the limiting value to this matrix, this will also go to the same matrix and therefore, you have these equations. Now, this system actually since all the rows are identical, so actually these k equations reduce to. Okay. So, now I am, uh, so far I was talking about uh, three state processes. So, now let me uh, just do this, uh, this much in uh, three in for the general case and then we will come back when we want to talk of specific values and examples. 
we will again revert back to uh, the three state uh, example that we have been talking about. Okay. So, uh, let us just talk about it in general and therefore, the system reduces to k equations. So, that means, I can simply uh, just equate the first row here to the first row here. Right? So, that means, uh, pi 1 to pi k is equal to pi 1 to pi k times the matrix P. And now, let us write out the equations in detail here. Okay. So, pi 1 uh, the first component here will be this multiplied by the first column of P. So, the first column P is P. So, pi 1 P 1 1 plus pi 2 P 2 1 and so on plus pi k P k 1. Right. Similarly, right, uh, equate the second component here or element to the second element that means, this multiplied by the second column of P. So, that gives us this and finally, the kth equation is pi k is equal to pi 1 p 1 k. So, the k, kth column we will take when we equate pi k with this multiplied by the kth column. So, I have these k equations, but uh, you can immediately see that the, these k equations are not linearly independent uh, since sigma p i j j varying from 1 to k is equal to 1. So, let us just uh, quickly check this that uh, all the equations that uh, see essentially what I am saying is that uh, your uh, first k minus 1 equations will give you the kth equation. So, therefore, uh, those of you who are familiar with the word rank. So, the rank of this matrix is k minus 1 or you want to show that. So, uh, let us add the first k minus 1 equations here. So, it will be pi 1 uh, plus pi 2 plus pi k minus 1 and this is equal to. So, when you are adding the first k, so you will be adding p 1 1 plus p 1 2 up to p 1 k minus 1. Right. So, it will be pi 1 into summation p 1 j, j varying from 1 to k minus 1 and similarly, uh, pi k into summation j varying from 1 to k minus 1 p k j. Okay. Now, since the uh, rows add up to for the transition matrix, we have uh, put the I mean, uh, we know this that uh, these uh, rows of the transition matrix will always add up to 1. So, therefore, uh, sigma j varying from 1 to k minus 1 p 1 j is actually 1 minus p 1 k, right? because this plus p 1 k is 1. So, therefore, this sum is equal to 1 minus p 1 k and similarly, I substitute for all of these sums by. So, this one will be 1 minus p k k and now you see that when you uh, open up the bracket. So, pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi k. So, pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi k minus 1 cancels out, you are left with pi k and the other things you transfer to the uh, this side, then the you immediately get uh, pi 1 p 1 k plus pi 2 p 2 k and pi k. P. So, this is your kth equation. So, because the uh, <coughs> probabilities of uh, the, the rows uh, sum up to 1, therefore, um, these k equations are not linearly independent. So, in fact, the first k or any any k minus 1 will lead you to the uh, kth one essentially, right? because here I just chose the first k minus 1, you can choose any k minus 1 and you will be able to obtain the uh, remaining one by adding the k minus 1 equations you have chosen. Okay. So, uh, therefore, uh, infinite solutions because uh, the matrix is not uh, uh, is singular, the coefficient matrix is singular and therefore, <coughs> but when you impose the condition because since we are looking for these steady state probabilities and they must add up to 1, pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi k has to be 1 because the system will be occupying one of the states either 1s, 2 or, th or k minus or k. So, uh, when you impose the condition that uh, pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi k is 1, then you get a unique solution. right? And uh, so, uh, so, this is uh, therefore, we have a very neat way of uh, computing these uh, st steady state probabilities and we uh, know that we have a unique solution. So, you cannot say that you know that the uh, probability of the long run probability of being in a particular state of the system, uh, you know the probabilities are more than 1, that would not be a, a reasonable solution. Okay. So, now let us go back to your job assignment problem and uh, let us uh, try to obtain, because I was trying to get you the uh, have a look at the uh, steady state probabilities uh, by taking the powers of p, but now here let us have a, this, this, seem, this seems to be a quicker way of and a neater way of solving the uh, trying to get the pi's. So, um, 
uh, because in the uh, in the uh, when you are taking the powers, you really do not know when to stop or in fact, uh, you would have to go on doing it till you see that the values are really closing in. So, therefore, uh, this would be a better way to get your steady state probabilities. And so, the three equations you see, you can see from pi 1 your uh, uh, this thing uh, p 1 2 is uh, no, no, uh, when you are writing the equation, yeah, p 2 1 is 0. So, here you get uh, yeah, the matrix is there in your uh, earlier lectures. So, these are the three equations essentially, right? Uh, for solving pi 1, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. So, therefore, I can uh, from this equation I immediately get. Uh, so, the trick would be that since uh, you know uh, I do not get a unique solution to this system. So, I will solve for pi 1 and pi 2 in terms of pi 3 and then I will uh, uh, apply the condition that the sum is equal to 1 to get the value of pi 3 and then I will get all the values. So, from here you see you immediately see that half of pi 1 is 3 by 4 pi 3. So, uh, that gives you that uh, uh, yeah, where is pi 1? Yeah, half of pi 1 is 3 by 4 pi 3. So, pi 1 is 3 by 2 pi 2, right. Uh, 3 by 2 pi 3, right. And then you can substitute here for uh, pi 1 in terms of pi 3 to get your pi 2. So, pi 2 comes out to be 5 by 4 pi 3, okay. because this is half pi 2 and this is pi 3 minus 1 by 4 into 3 by 2 pi 3. So, which makes it 3 by 8. So, 5 by 8 pi 3, therefore, pi 2 is 5 by 4 pi 3. So, now I substitute the values pi 1 is 3 by 2 pi 3, this is 5 by oh, this is uh, 5 by 4, 5 by 4 pi 3 and this is 1. So, therefore, uh, how much is this? I suppose I will have to redo this thing or maybe this was right, yeah, I do not know. Yeah. So, what is it? Uh, this will be 6 plus 5 plus 4, oh, so the value was okay. What I had this was a, a mistake here, but the value I had computed was okay. So this is this, right? Okay. So therefore, your pi three, pi three is four by fifteen. Okay, and so this gives you pi two equal to five by four into four by fifteen, right? pi the value of pi 3. So, that makes it 1 by 3 right. and pi 1 would be pi 1 is 3 by 2. So, 3 by 2 into uh, 4 by 15 which is this and 3 by 5. So, pi 1 is 2 by 5. Right. And now, let us compare these values with uh, what we had obtained by taking uh, powers of p. So, our pi 1 had come out to be something because uh, two values are 1 0 t 2 upon 256 and the other one was 1 0 3 upon 256. So, you see 2 by 5 does lie between these two numbers. So, this was up to fourth power right and when you take the fifth and sixth powers you will see that the values will get closer and you will actually uh, reach 2 by 5 right. Similarly, your pi 2 uh, is 1 by 3 and this is also a number lying between 85 upon 256 and 86 upon 256 right you can compare right this is between so 1 by 3 lies between these two and similarly uh, 4 by 15 is a number which is between 68 by 256 and 69 by 256 so uh, the two things match but certainly that's a much better quicker way of uh, obtaining your steady state probabilities now, these uh, steady state probabilities have very useful interpretations and we will continue seeing through examples later on when we analyze the process further. So, uh, essentially what we have said is that pi i is the probability that in distant future one will find the system in state i. So, the probability that your process will be that means a, per, a particular employee in the um, uh, automobile manufacturing company uh, that particular employee will be in let us say H r, uh, when you know after the process has gone on for let us say 4 or 4 years or 5 years, so we expect the percent the probability that uh, the employee would be uh, in the H r division is 1 by 3 or the probability that he will be with sales is 4 by 15, 
right. So, these are the long term probabilities and as we said that uh, the uh, initial uh, that means, the division or the section in which he started his career is irrelevant here, right. Then you can also uh, interpret this as the fraction of time the system occupies state j, right, fraction of time the system is occupying the state j, okay. Oh, I am writing pi i, so it should be pi i here, sorry, yeah, this is i. So, the, the fraction of time the system occupies state i, right. Now, if you run many identical processes simultaneously, then uh, you see the pi j would come out to be the fraction of processes that you would find in state j. That means, if you suppose run um, uh, 100 identical processes simultaneously and you find out the, uh, that, that it is um, um, maybe 45, 45 of the processes are at that particular time. Of course, you let the processes run for a long time and then after a certain at particular period uh, time, you uh, just find out how many of these processes are occupying state j. So, if that comes out to be 45, then your pi j would be pi j would be approximately 45 upon 100. That will be the fraction of processes that you would find in state j. Okay. And another interesting uh, interpretation of the pi j is, is you know it is the reciprocal of the mean number of transitions between recurrence of state j. So, this recurrence I will define formally after some time which is also very important. So, what we are saying is that um, this is the reciprocal of the mean number of transitions. So, on the average how many transitions you would be required to uh, go from state j to j. Now, recurrence means for the first time that means, you are in state j to start off and then for the first time when you revisit j. So, that number of transitions if you take the average of such transitions then the reciprocal of that is your pi j and this also we will derive in another way and of course, this part we will prove later on. So, for example, what we are saying is that since pi 2 is 1 by 3 and pi 2, 2 is our um, uh, HR section. So, we are saying on the average 3 transitions will be required for this particular employee to go from HR to HR. That means, if he starts his career with the HR human resource section, then he will after 3 in, in on the average he would be requiring three transitions to get back to HR. So, this is the, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the, the so many uh, interpretations that we have, we can give and then we will see how we make use of these uh, uh, steady state probabilities to uh, analyze uh, these processes further. So, let us now, um, I have taken this example from again Ravinder Phillips and uh, Solberg. So, interesting physical interpretation of state probabilities. So, what he is saying is that in the, you know, the job assignment uh, problem, uh, you know, you consider the uh, three uh, states as three reservoirs. So, node 1 and node 2 and node 3, they are reservoirs and the arcs connecting the uh, nodes are the pipes through which liquid can flow with valves to ensure that flow goes in the direction in which the arrows are there. For example, there will be a valve here uh, which will uh, uh, which will direct the flow from 1 to 3 only and another wall which will direct the flow from 1 to 2 and then another one which will just uh, direct the flow from 1 to 1. Okay. So, this is the idea. So, just uh, think of this as a reservoir representing a reservoir with these pipes connecting them uh, with the reservoirs and then uh, the um, valves to ensure that the flow goes in the direction in which the arrows are there. right? And then the probabilities p i j's that means, for example, the probability uh, 1 4 associated 1 2 would be the fraction of the liquid that is there in 1 uh, in reservoir 1 which will be sent to 2. right? Similarly, um, if you look at uh, 2 to 3, then it is the half the uh, liquid which is there in reservoir 2 will be sent to uh, from 2 to 3 and so on. So, these probabilities then can be uh, 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 interpreted as the fraction of the liquid in the re in reservoir. So, p i j is the uh, fraction of the liquid in reservoir i that will pass to reservoir j in one unit time. So, it will take one unit of time for the flow. Uh, so, that means, half the flow from here to here in one unit of time will go so from 2 to 3. 
right. So, the, because the probability is half. So, if we uh, think of uh, the system as uh, you know made like this, then uh, what you do is you pour one unit of liquid into the system according to these initial uh, probabilities. That means, uh, one fourth of the liquid is put in reservoir 1, uh, one fourth is put in reservoir 2 and half the liquid is put in reservoir 3. Okay. And then um, the liquid is allowed to flow uh, according to this plan and then uh, what we are saying is that dynamic equilibrium. So, what we have discussed that the uh, probabilities will um, uh, converge and uh, they will become irrespective of how much liquid was initially poured into the reservoirs. So, finally, uh, uh, dynamic equilibrium will be attained and liquid will continue to flow, but the liquid in each reservoir will equal the steady state probabilities. Right? So, our steady state probabilities, okay, I do not have the numbers here, but uh, whatever we had computed pi 1, pi 2, pi 3 as. right? So, for example, I remember pi 2 was 1 by 3. So, um, uh, pi 2 would be uh, the that means, the reservoir 2 will have one third of the liquid and then pi 1 uh, would represent the amount of liquid that is in reservoir 1 and pi 3 will be the amount of liquid uh, present in reservoir 3. Okay. So, um, this is the interesting part and so, what is being said is that actually equilibrium will uh, be attained and uh, uh, the liquid will continue to flow according to this plan, but each reservoir will settle down to even though the starting amounts were this, uh, each reservoir will settle down to the amount of liquid according to these steady state probabilities. And what do we mean by, uh, so equilibrium means that for each reservoir, uh, the flow out will be equal to the flow in. Right. Then only uh, uh, the uh, uh, whatever uh, there is the liquid is there, steady state uh, liquid that is there in the reservoir will be maintained, right? Which is according to your pi one, pi two, pi three. So flow out from reservoir I would be so the probability that you are in uh, reservoir I into then p i j, right? Summation over j. So from I it can go to reservoir one to two to three. So this is the probability that the amount uh, liquid flow out from uh, uh, from reservoir I and the amount and for this you can write when you are summing up you are summing up with respect to j. So I can pi I can come out and this will be sigma j p i j. But sigma j p i j is one all these probabilities in the uh, ith row will add up to 1. So, this is pi i right? and the flow in from other reservoirs that the flow is coming in. So, that will be pi k into p k i. Right? The flow is coming from the kth reservoir to the ith reservoir and so and this is the probability of being in the uh, kth reservoir. So, this is sigma uh, pi, pi k p k i. Well, okay, I am talking of probabilities, but here we are saying this is the amount that is there in the kth reservoir, and so this is the fraction which is going to i. So, uh, yeah, I should actually uh, interpret the whole thing in terms of uh, this particular example. So, here also I should not <laughs> refer to pi i as the probability of being in i, but this is the amount of liquid that is there in the ith reservoir, and uh, the p i j fraction of this liquid is being sent to the jth. Uh, reservoir, right? So therefore, uh, flow out. So from the ith reservoir, this much is the liquid, and from this, these are the fractions of this liquid which are being sent to different reservoir. So this is the flow out, and this is the flow in. So please just uh, interpret it this way. Ignore my earlier remark. So this is um, sigma pi k p k i, right? and so uh, the two must be equal, and therefore you again get these. If you do it for all i, then you will immediately get this equation pi is equal to pi p. So, I, I thought this was an uh, interesting way of uh, looking at the steady state uh, probabilities and uh, some, some of these will uh, fix certain ideas in your mind. right? Okay. Uh, then another example from Sheldon Ross that I want to, because um, I, I really want to spend time on these steady state probabilities, so that you get the ideas, you know, uh, understand the, uh, them properly. Okay. Now, here this is an example where um, it is a production system and uh, these are the probabilities of uh, transition probabilities. So, you have four states 1, 2 and 3, 4. Now, uh, the states 1 and 2 are considered as acceptable or you can say when the system is up, 
and 3, 4 are not acceptable, which, uh, which you have to interpret as your system is down. That means, there is a breakdown, the machines are not uh, uh, functioning. So, uh, there are 4 states and these, this is your transition matrix uh, from uh, state i to state j and um, uh, questions to be answered. Now, the questions that we want to answer are the rate at which the production process goes from up to down. That means, rate of breakdown. So, when it is uh, up, that means when the machines are working and then uh, there is a breakdown. So, you want to know the rate at which the process, the production process goes from up to down. And another question will be the average length of time the process remains down. Okay, that is also very important because you want to know with this kind of transition matrix, you want to know for how long the process will remain. And of course, you always talk in terms of average length of time, the process remains down when it goes down. So, when there is a breakdown, for how long will it remain uh, in that state before it comes up. But now, the uh, uh, new thing is that you have two states which are describing the up situation and two states which are describing the down situation. So, therefore, I took up this example to again show you. Of course, we will uh, compute the pi i's and then I will show you the how to uh, compute answer this and there are many more questions that have to be answered. So, the third question you want to answer is the average length of time the process remains up when it goes up. So, these are three questions we will try to answer uh, by computing the steady state probabilities. So, um, we write down the equations for the finding the steady state probabilities. So, pi 1 is equal to right this pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 times the first column. So, you get this number uh, this equation then pi 2. So, you can just by looking at the transition matrix. Um, yeah, the matrix P, then you can see that these are the uh, four equations that we will obtain. Right Now, interestingly, the f uh, second column here is all 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4. Right? So, when you write the second equation, this you immediately get the solution for pi 2, because all these add up to 1. Right? The state, steady state probabilities have to add up to 1. So, this immediately uh, comes out that pi 2 is equal to 1 by 4. So, I have used it already here and now since I have the value of pi 2, I should be able to immediately compute the values of uh, pi 1, pi 2 and pi 3. So, uh, what I do is here, um, yeah. No, that is not, uh, I have to now after having, having got pi 2, yes, I can now see uh, from here, yeah. No, even here. So, I thought that it was immediate that you could compute after you have pi 2, then uh, yes, yes. See here, yeah, you see that is where one has to be a little clever and use inspection. So, here this is pi 1, pi, pi 3 and pi 4 and again the coefficients are 1 by 4. So, this I can write as 1 by 4 into 1 minus pi 2, see and I have the value of pi 2 already as 1 by 4. So, this again immediately gives me pi 1 as uh, 1 minus 1 by 4 is 3 by 4 into 1 by 4. So, 3 by 16. So, your pi 1 is 3 by 16. Now, I have the values of pi 1 and pi 2. So, then from here I can immediately get pi 3 because bring this here. So, this will be 3 by 4 pi 3, 3 by 4 pi 3 and I substitute the values of pi 1 and pi 2. So, this will be 1 by 2 into 3 by 16 plus 1 by 2 into 1 by 4 that gives me 7 by 32. So, pi 3 will be uh, when you uh, multiply by 4 by 3 gives you 7 by 24. Okay. And then once you have, uh, you now have pi 2, pi 3 and uh, pi 4 is uh, on this side when you bring it, it will be half pi 4 and so again substituting for pi 2 and pi 3, uh, you get these values and so you get pi 4. So, this was quick work, right. No, this is certainly faster than computing, uh, you know, uh, second, third, fourth powers of p, uh, which is a 4 by 4 matrix. So, a lot of multiplications if you start uh, taking the different powers, right. Now, let us try to answer the questions. Uh, rate of breakdown. So, rate of breakdown is a transition probability of transitioning from up to down, right. That means, up means when your machines are working or any one of the machines is working and then uh, any one breakdown will mean there is a breakdown. So, um, uh, that means you are transitioning from uh, up 1 and 2 which are up states to the down states which are 3 and 4. So, that means you want to say that if you are in state 1, 
So, that is a pro probability into your, your transition from 1 to 3 or 1 to 4. Okay. So, that is p 1 3 plus p 1 4 right? and, and if you are in state 2, then uh, the transitioning from up to uh, down is 2 3 plus 2 4, p 2 3 plus p 2 4. Okay. So, we have all these numbers for uh, uh, the probability of uh, rate of breakdown will be 9 by 3 2. Right, because uh, any one of the breakdowns, say right, this means you know going from uh, up to down. So any one breakdown or two breakdown, whatever it is, the probability is nine by thirty-two, right? And that is your rate of breakdown. Now you want to answer the second question, which is the average length of time. Average length of time the process remains down when it goes down. And the other one is uh, the uh, average length of time it is up when it goes up. So, both the things. So, let us uh, define u bar as the average time the system is up and d bar as the average time the system is down. Then your rate of breakdown is now we are you know redefining or talking it now. So, then we will make the equations and then try to find out u bar and d bar. This is the idea. So, rate of breakdown is 1 upon u bar plus d bar because uh, you know see this is the average time it is up and average time it is down. So, one breakdown uh, at the rate of 1 upon u bar plus d bar right, because this is the total time when it is up and then down average time. So, therefore, 1 upon this will give you the rate of breakdown, because one breakdown for this this much period, one breakdown for this much period and therefore, the rate is 1 upon u bar plus d bar right. So, proportion of up time is then u bar upon u bar plus d bar and similarly, you will define the proportion of uh, down time as d bar upon u bar plus d bar. Right? Now, let us try to find out. So, the definition of u bar will be uh, uh, pi 1 plus pi 2. Right? This is uh, because this is the uh, you are you're either in state 1 or in state 2 that is when it is up. So, this is the time this is the probability of being in state 1 or state 2 and then uh, so this is the proportion of time and this is your rate of breakdown 1 upon u bar plus d bar which we have already computed as this from here right. This is your rate of breakdown. So, that is this okay. and so this uh, gives you your u bar and then we compute uh, uh, d bar and uh, we will continue with the exercise. Yeah, so, uh, therefore, we saw that u bar will turn out to be 7 by 16, which is pi 1 plus pi 2 divided by u bar plus d bar, which was your uh, rate of breakdown. So, that was 9 by 32. So, then we multiply and it will be 32 by 9. So, this uh, u bar comes out to be 14 by 9. That means, this is the average amount of time uh, for which the system will be up. Right. And since uh, u bar plus d bar is uh, 32 by 9, so to get d bar, we will simply say d bar plus u bar minus u bar, which is 14 by 9. So, that comes out to be 18 by 9, which is 2 units of time. Right. So, therefore, um, uh, what the, we have been able to answer the three questions that were asked. The first was, uh, what is the rate of breakdown? So, this is 9 by 32 or 28 percent of the time, the breakdowns occur. Okay. And then the breakdowns on the average uh, last for 2 units of time. Okay. So, that means, once the system is down, then it will remain down for 2 units of time. And uh, then the third question was the uh, average uh, amount of time for which it is up, uh, when it is. Uh, so, then there is an average amount of time uh, for uh, 14 by 9. So, 14 by 9 it is up when the system is up right so it will remain uh, up for 14 by 9 times so okay now the thing is certainly uh, the system is not in a very satisfactory situation because your breakdowns the on the average the breakdowns of uh, remain for 2 units of time whereas your uh, actual production time is only 14 by 9 which is less than uh, 2 units of time so certainly the system is not uh, in a very healthy state uh, and so, this again uh, gives a warning to the uh, uh, manufacturer to do something about it, because the way the transition probabilities are given, uh, this is what your uh, uh, conclusions are. Okay. 
So, uh, I hope uh, you understand see the way we computed this because uh, we had to uh, uh, define u bar and d bar and then of course, uh, uh, the other reason I took this example was that you know uh, you, uh, th there were two states which were defining uh, the up system and two states which were defining the down system and therefore, we had to uh, the, the computations were not uh, just straightforward. So, I thought uh, that will be a, a good example to discuss. Uh, in this course. Okay. So, uh, once we have talked about uh, the state probabilities pi i's, which we were answering as to uh, the you know because this and of course, uh, we have also computed uh, this. So, for that means, uh, number of transitions required to go from i to j, this was the answer and the pi i's gave you the uh, uh, the pi i's gave you the uh, uh, long term uh, probabilities of being of the system occupying a particular state. And then all, of course, we also said this is the fraction of time that the uh, system will be in state i. So, pi i's I gave you these uh, uh, interpretations of pi i. Now, this other kind of questions that are needed, which are now the first passage and first return probabilities. So, this is also very important, because uh, you want to know how long will it take to reach a certain state. Okay. And so, when you say how long will it take to reach a certain state, see the statement uh, it, it means here that you know uh, that, that will be the for the first time that you reach the state. So, that means you starting from a uh, state i and then you are wanting to say that how long will it take for you to reach state j. So, obviously, the moment you reach state j, you have answered that question. So, therefore, um, uh, this will be uh, what we mean by this is that the for the first time that you reach state j from i. So, that is the understanding. So, uh, that means, uh, now for example, if n transactions occur before state j is reached from state i. Huh? So, suppose we want to uh, just uh, uh, you know surmise or say that n transactions have taken uh, place before state j is reached from state i and we then we want to know the probability that uh, n transactions will be required uh, from going from i to j. Then you might say that would p i j raised to n be the answer for this probability, because p i j n also tells you the probability of transitioning from i to j in step 1. But see now there is a difference, um, because uh, you see when you uh, talk about uh, p i j n, then it does not say that you may uh, reach j before and a number of times before you finally reach uh, j in uh, uh, n steps. The various graphs that I drew for you earlier uh, showed that you may uh, you know like you had uh, you started from state 1, then you stayed in state 1 and state 1. So, this was your uh, you know transition probability from 1 to 1 in 2 steps or in 3 steps you stayed in state 1, right. So, here um, that is fine. So, this was your uh, P113. P113 of course, also included that you could go from here to here, remain here and then come here, right? or you, you could stay here, then go here and go here. So, this is fine. Th this particular path that you are taking, uh, uh, no you are not coming back to uh, state 1 before. So, starting from state 1, you are reaching here with, without going to state 1 beforehand. right? So, therefore, this is the kind of path you are looking for, but whereas when we were computing your p 113, we had all possible paths to reach from 1 to 1 okay, in 3 steps. That is what we were doing. Say for example, uh, if you consider p i j 4, then p i j 4 I could go uh, to 4 in step 2 also that means, from i I could go to j as I said and then you could again go to j and then j. This would also be there. right? then you will have i to j and then uh, you could go to k and then to j and this way. So, so many paths, but you nobody is stopping you from. So, when you compute the probability p i j 4, remember we said it includes all possible paths uh, for of going from i to j right? and so you could revisit j in between a number of times because you have to, you have to enumerate all possible paths. So, therefore, this is not the answer what you are looking for. So, we need to uh, make some more definitions and some more uh, uh, terminology has to be introduced to uh, uh, compute these uh, probabilities. So, the first passage and first return probabilities we want to compute. 
right. Okay. Uh, so, essentially what we are looking for is that for the first time I reach j from i. So, in between I should not have uh, touched state j and when the first time it occurs I want to uh, compute the probabilities of such and so, so what we will do is we will make this definitions here. Yeah. So, uh, again uh, f i j n I am defining as the first passage probability and so I need to I have written first passage here, but I will define it here. So, first passage probability of going from state i to state j and uh, remember x n was the state uh, in which the system is at time n right. This is a we have been using this notation. Uh, when we were describing the transition probabilities and the Markov process. So, now what are we asking for? Uh, we are saying that f i j n is equal to the probability of x n equal to j, but x n minus 1 is not j, x n minus 2 is not j and x 1 is not j. It is only x naught, oh sorry, x naught is x naught is i. So, starting from i in between all these um, n minus 1 transitions that take place, you do not ever touch j, but it is only in the nth transition that you reach j. So, probability of that is what we are defining by f i j n. So, that means probability of reaching uh, j from i in n transitions for the first time. Right. So, uh, if you look at uh, f 1 uh, f 1 f i j 0, then f i j 0 is 0 because you cannot transition. Then f i j 1 will be p i j you are uh, right f i j 1 will be simply p i j. So, now we want to compute f i j n that is probability of going from i to j for the first time in n steps n transitions for the first time. So, we should not have visited j in between uh, the uh, less than n steps and so uh, this we will obtain by writing uh, p i j n, which is the total probability of going from i to j in n steps all possible paths, which may imply revisiting j number of times and then finally, coming back to j. So, p i j n minus in sigma k varying from 1 to n minus 1, you see because uh, you want to reach for the first time from i to j in n steps. So, your k can be allowed to vary from 1 to n minus 1 only and then this will be f i j k. So, for the first time you have visited uh, from i to j in k steps okay. and then uh, once you reach j and then again you can go to many other states come back to j or stay in j whatever it is uh, from uh, in n minus k steps. Right. So, for example, if you look at p 1 1 3, then what we are saying is that you can you know continue staying here in state 1 for all the 3 transitions or you can go somewhere here, come back and then again revisit here right? and whatever possible paths you can or uh, you can go this way, this way, this way. So, many other paths you can think of. So, we are ruling out all those paths. Right. So, we are subtracting. So, that means, you have visited from i to j in k steps for the first time and then in the remaining n minus k, you again from j go to other places or remain in j and then come back to j. So, we uh, subtract all these, then we get the probability that f i j, uh, we subtract these from p i j n. So, we get the probability that uh, probability of visiting j from i for the first time in n steps. Right. And then we will see a lot of imp, uh, applications and implications of uh, these probabilities. So, this is what we uh, how we write down the expression for f i j n. So, let me uh, and, and of course, when j is equal to i, then f i i n would be the probability of going back to i from i for the first time. So, you started uh, from state i and then when you for the first time you reach uh, state i again uh, in n steps of going. So, I should say from the step in, in n transitions. Okay. So, in n transitions. So, this will be f i phi n and that will be the probability of recurrence of i state i in n steps. So, f i f i i n and I had used the word recurrence earlier and I said we will define it later on. So, that is uh, and we will of course, be talking in detail about 
uh, these first passage times and first return time. So, first return probability is your recurrence probability, uh, probability of recurrence, but here of course, we are saying in terms of uh, uh, n transitions and then you would want to know uh, the probability of ever returning to state i and so we will compute that also. So, now the number of transitions to go from i to j for the first time. So, transitioning from i to j for the first time is called the first passage time. Okay. So, the number of transitions required to go from i to j for the first time, we will define it as a first passage time and you can see that um, this is also a random variable, because you do not know how many uh, transitions you will require to go from i to j for the first time. So, first passage time is a random variable and if i is equal to j, then the first passage time is called the first recurrence time. Okay. So, this will be uh, when uh, you want to come back to the same state starting from a particular state, you want to come back to it for the first time that will be your first recurrence time. Right? So, first passage times and first recurrence times are random variables right? and therefore, um, uh, you can redefine uh, define this again f i j n is the probability that first passage time from uh, pr probability of first passage time from i to j in n steps. Yeah. That means, your random variable. So, f i j n is the probability of the first recurrence of the first passage time equal to n. Right. So, f i j n will be because uh, this is the uh, time first time you return uh, you go from i to j and when this value is equal to n you want to compute this the probability of the first passage time equal to n is your uh, f i j n. Right. This is how we will define. We will go through now a very interesting journey when we want to you know compute these f i j n and f i um, f i i n and in fact, you would finally, want to talk about f i j. So, that means, that will be uh, when for the first time your uh, you return from i to from transition from i to j. So, without the n because here this is uh, transitioning the first passage time when it is equal to uh, n that means, the probability of the first passage time equal to n. So, now you would want to uh, then finally, compute your f i j and f i i. So, we will continue with this discussion.